Welcome to this video tutorial. In this video tutorial, I will show you how you can read audio files from your computer and use the information obtained from these files and plot time domain signals and frequency domain signals on MATLAB. Before we jump into MATLAB, I'd like to quickly mention it's better to have all the files that you're going to be using in the project in one file directory so that it's easy for you to access it. Um, so here we will be dealing with the audio clip named recording with uh, M4A file format. I've checked with uh, the WAV format and the MP3 format. It works fine for this specific approach. Uh, now I'm going to play the audio clip. Recording one. So if you notice, it's uh, around a five second clip. We are going to use that as kind of like a verification case when we are getting our plots. So first we want to obtain the samples and the sampling frequency by using a function called audio read and passing the file name as the parameter so if i quickly run this if you see the workspace you can see the fre uh, sampling frequency is 48 000 hertz and the samples uh, is about 261119 uh, samples long and you can see that uh, it has two columns of information which just suggests that the audio clip that we are working with is in stereo hence the double channel now let's plot the time domain so first we need a time vector and we define it using a lint space function which generates a linear spaced so zero is going to be a starting point and the ending point will be length of y divided by fs and there's going to be a total of length y steps so what this quickly means is if i take out the calculator so we have y the length of y being 261119 so if i put that in the calculator 261119 divided by 48000 so uh, here fs is technically the reciprocal of sampling time so fs is equal to 1 by t so when you're multiplying TS, that is the sampling time, to the total number of samples, you're essentially trying to find out the end time. So here the end time, as you can see, is 5.433 seconds approximately. So now we got our time vector defined. Now we can just simply plot it. Give it a title so that it's more organized. X label. Time. Y label is amplitude. So when we run this, we are expected to get the time domain signal. And here it is. So if you remember, I told you to uh, remember that the audio clip is approximate 5.43-ish seconds. And you can see that it's very close to that. And it's plotted from 0 to 5.43 seconds. And this is how the signal looks when plotted in time domain. Now, since we're done with that, let's go to the frequency domain. So firstly, we need to define the frequency vector. We follow the similar steps of taking lint space to generate a linear uh, gener uh, linear space vector. So it's going to start from zero end at FS, which is the sampling frequency 48,000. And we'll have to give it a total steps for the complete vector. So let's define it as NFFT because we'll be using it further ahead. And we'll define NFFT as 1024 as the number of samples for this vector. Now let's define y, which is going to be the absolute value of 
uh, that we're going to plot on the y axis so absolute fft of y comma nft so this is basically an endpoint uh, for your transform so we're applying an uh, endpoint photo transform where n is 1024 and y is the samples that we generated from the audio file so once we defined y it's time to plot so uh, i'll discuss why i choose to take half the index of the complete x uh, vector and the y vector once i show you the plot Let's title it, we'll call it frequency domain. Label it. Oh my bad. This will be frequency. And this will be our absolute. That is our y axis. So when we plot it, you can see this is the frequency domain that we're going to be expecting for the given audio signal now coming back to the code you can see that i have taken half the index right uh, so frequency half the frequency uh, means that it'll go approximately till 24000 hertz and if you similarly see here in the figure you can see that it's going between zero hertz all the way to somewhere near 24,000 hertz. Very close. Now the reason why we do this uh, is more of like a general purpose reasoning. Uh, if you think about it, the human ear can perceive frequency between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz. So anything above 20,000 hertz uh, kind of seems redundant. But in case you want to uh, you know, really explore um, the frequencies beyond 20,000 hertz. In this case, you can just remove the by two from the indices. And when you run that, we can we can see the frequency domain for the respective thing. So it's going from zero to somewhere around 48,000 hertz. So this is the frequency domain for the whole spectrum from zero to 48,000 hertz. And uh, yeah, this is it for this video. If you guys enjoyed uh, what you saw, please leave a like and uh, share it with uh, any of your friends who you think would benefit from it. And uh, if you'd like to see more videos from us like so, uh, please go ahead and subscribe. Thank you.